Chen from National Children's Hospital. Uh, Dr. Chen will be talking on a multi-center uh, collaboration on infantile onset FSHD. And uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to introduce Dr. Chen and Dr. Chen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I would like to thank the FSH Society and sponsors for giving us this opportunity to present um, uh, ongoing clinical studies, um, a multi-center collaborative study on infantile onset FSHD. So as Dr. Venomero just mentioned, um, now after a lot of different uh, research involved in the study, we understand that the contraction of D4Z4 array lead to uh, a barren expression of DOX4 in our cells, and then that cause FSHD. Um, there is a very early study in 1995 done by Dr. Peter Lund and colleagues Actually, in this study, they show that if you look at the figure, um, the x-axis, it's uh, the uh, fragment size of the D4Z4 array, and the y-axis, the vertical one, is the age of uh, onset of the disease. And each dot is uh, information from the patient. So you can see that um, if a patient have a smaller fragment size, it seems that there's a higher chance they will actually uh, develop um, the disease earlier. But if you look at them, um, I couldn't point here, but if you look at um, them carefully, you can see some of the individual, they um, show disease symptoms later than 10 year old, but they actually have a very small, this individual have very small uh, disease uh, fragment. And other individuals, they may have a relatively large disease size, but they actually uh, show disease symptoms uh, before 10 years old. So this huge variation was what uh, Dr. Mandelman just mentioned. Uh, really, uh, you cannot use disease, the fragment size to predict what will happen to the patient. But there is a trend that if you have a smaller size, uh, it's more likely this individual will have the disease at the earlier age. Uh, a, similar a similar result was found in the disease severity uh, in these patients. So if the individual have a smaller uh, fragment size, it's more likely this individual will become uh, wheelchair bound or they will need the wheelchair uh, at the earlier age. So, um, there, um, there was an early study done uh, by Dr. Brower and uh, colleagues defined infantile onset FSHD as uh, individuals show symptoms, facial weakness before age of five and shoulder girdle uh, weakness before age of 10. These patients tend to have more severe muscle um, weakness, uh, both facial, shoulder girdle, and also uh, lower limb. And as I mentioned earlier, they, more likely they will need to use wheelchair uh, in their life. In addition, there are additional symptoms that's usually not uh, observed in, uh, in the FSH population, including retinal vasculopathy, um, the blood vessels in the retina of your eyes are dilated or uh, deformed, and that lead to leakiness of uh, liquid fluid um, under the retina or even hemorrhage, and that can actually lead to vision problem if not treated, diagnosed, and treated early. And also sensory hearing loss, and uh, um, it, uh, it's especially, it's probably more important for younger children to get diagnosed and uh, treatment early, because uh, if, they are, if they are not diagnosed and treated early, uh, that might actually lead to delay in development of their language skill. And these seems, um, based on uh, reports, seems more frequent in the population with infantile FSHD and usually more severe. And uh, epilepsy and mental retardation is very rare, but has been reported. So um, 
So the studies, there are a few studies of infantile FSHD in the past, and usually the sample size of these studies are relatively low. So the purpose of this, uh, this uh, multi-center uh, clinical study is to um, recruit um, more patients with uh, infantile form of FSHD, and then um, to understand the clinical features of this disease better, to understand the impact of the disease to individuals with this uh, specific type of FSHD, and to collect blood, collect blood samples for biomedical research that may potentially benefit few patients in the future. So um, the study objective is to establish a standardized muscle testing protocol, including both manual and quantitative muscle testing, as well as functional testing for use in children, because uh, this is infantile form, so uh, a lot of patients will be children, and adults with infantile FSHD. And describe clinical phenotype of these, uh, this disease, this disease group, uh, using a larger cohort and evaluate the impact of physical impairment, secondary health conditions, activity limitations, and disability caused by FSHD on health-related quality of life and disability across different age groups, as well as to evaluate the utility of FSHD clinical severity scale um, developed by the Italian group. Um, in addition, we like to collect blood samples for um, potential investigation of genetic modifier of clinical phenotypes and disease progression in infantile FSHD, as Dr. Manamaro just mentioned. And we're also interested in comparing uh, RNA expression uh, from the samples uh, from individuals that have more severe phenotype uh, versus the individuals that have milder phenotype, although they actually share the same uh, repeat size. And uh, we also like to identify biomarker candidates for this disease um, using uh, blood samples. Um, as we know that this disease is slow in progress um, compared to Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And uh, um, also, uh, so imagine if we conduct a clinical study in the future, um, to, it will take very long time for us to actually uh, see uh, efficacy, treat therapeutic efficacy. And so there is a, a question whether we can use a biomarker that will be a gene or a protein, in the, especially in this case, will be in plasma, will be in blood samples that can actually uh, demonstrate early response to an effective treatment. So we can actually check this specific biomarker, how the gene changes this expression to know if the treatment is effective for the patient instead of waiting to see um, uh, improvement of muscle function. So that's, the, that's one of the goal of the, this blood sample collected for the study. So the study is uh, uh, chaired by Jing Ma, Dr. Jing Ma at Alberta Hospital, Canada, and I at Children's uh, National Medical Center, DC. And uh, the study itself is executed by the Synergy Group, and I will talk about that in the next few slides. And the project manager is Zoe Sund. And uh, we actually have brochures today. Um, I will be at the table, uh, clinical center table later. Um, if anyone is interested, I will provide a brochure to you and explain more. Um, so the Synergy stands for the Cooperative International Neuromuscular Research Group. And the, the website uh, for more information is also on the slide and also the brochure. And it is a, a multi-center uh, group founded with other investigations, uh, founded in 1999 at Children's Health, uh, National Health System. It's a multidisciplinary and cross-institutional network of clinicians and scientists wishing to positively impact the lives of patients with neuromuscular diseases uh, via research studies. And the Synergy conducted studies that study causes um, pathogenesis and clinical outcomes of neuromuscular disorders and uh, conduct well um, controlled clinical studies, clinical trials. The coordinator center of Synergy is physically located at the Children's National Medical Center. It's directed by Dr. Knan, um, Dr. Paula Clemens, and uh, Eric, Dr. Eric Hoffman. The group has conducted 
um, has already completed 10 different clinical studies, including clinical trials. Uh, many of them are involving uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and uh, many of them are published at this point. There are six ongoing studies. Uh, most of them, uh, except this, this study, infantile form FSC study, also are involving Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So the Synergy Clinical Research Network consists of 27 sites. All centers involved in the study in that network are major neuro neuromuscular referral centers. And as you can see, the disease census, under the disease census, um, about 60, uh, 600 patients uh, with FSHD are seeing a doctor uh, in one of these centers. Um, this is the Syn Synergy Clinical Site locations. So you, there's a domestic U.S. site, and the other uh, column is an international site that's involved. And the ones that are circled are the sites actually participating in this specific infantile FSHD study. So, um, so at each site, uh, in addition to a, a principal investigator and a coordinator, there will be at least two uh, certified trained and certified physical therapist to be the evaluator of the muscle function strength and uh, perform the quantitative me measure of uh, the, uh, the muscle strength. So the CQMS uh, mentioned earlier on, on the slide, uh, it's a quantitative measure system developed by the Synergy and there are over 50 phys physical therapists certified um, through this training, so there are centralized training, and also other devices are um, the same, um, standardized e equipment. So this is an example. So this is actually uh, devi uh, developed by Synergy for uh, pediatric testing. So as you can see on the picture, there's a, a child, so hooked to the transducer, actually a device to measure the muscle strength. At the same time, uh, he can look at the screen, computer screen, and see the car racing. So the harder you pull, the car will actually move faster and then compete against uh, the other car in the computer. So that's to motivate the child to actually pull really hard to make, so to uh, ensure the accuracy of the me measurement. So, um, so at this point, we have a recruited uh, 50, uh, we, we aim at recruiting 50 participants with infantile onset FSHD across all centers. Um, we have recruited 34 patients, and we aim at, uh, we hope we will uh, finish the enrollment by the end of the, um, this year. So to include uh, patient uh, participants in this study, um, the participant need to have um, early onset um, of symptoms involving facial or shoulder girdle muscle at, uh, at or younger than 10 years. So um, an individual can be over 10 years to participate as long as the diagnosis is, um, is done by um, 10 years old. Um, I, was, uh, I was also told that if you have, uh, for example, the physicians will ask you to show pictures. If, the, if it's not in the medical records, then you can actually show pictures um, to show if, you, if the, there's a facial weakness and things like that. And uh, for familial cases, autosomal dominant inheritance, and then uh, genetic testing confirmed the contraction of the allele. Um, the exclu exclusion criteria include the symptomatic cardiomyopathy or severe cardioarrhythmia, which may limit the ability to complete the study protocol. Uh, Mitochondrial mode of inheritance, also known as a mitochondria inheritance, that means a diseased gene can be passed from mother to both son and daughter, but then only the daughter can pass on the gene. So suggesting there probably there, there's a mitochondria cause of the disease instead of FSHD. Or any evidence uh, of alternative diagnosis based on muscle biopsies or other available investigations just suggest this may not be FSHD. Or um, there's a, so basically if there's a reason the examiner think the patient could not complete the study uh, because of the limitations of the cause by the disease 
or um, this may not be a FSHD case, then that would be the only reason an individual will not participate in this trial. So um, this, the visit will be one day visit, um, but it will be a very packed one day visit because a lot of things uh, will be done in that day. Um, the first one will be a phys physician assessment, so that's just general assessment like weight, height, um, blood pressures, medical history, and what medicines are taken and these type of things. Um, the second one will be cognitive assessment. So this is age specific. Uh, individual need to be far more than older than six year old to actually complete this uh, assessment. And there are different uh, assessment designed for different age groups. And the third one is a standardized self-administered questionnaire. It's also age uh, specific. So if the patient is a two year old, the parents will complete a specific set of questionnaire. And then the teenagers will complete some while the parents complete the others. And, um, and the adults will complete their own uh, assessment. So um, the last one is clinical evaluation assessment. So the physical, like we mentioned earlier, the physical therapist will actually do the muscle testing and uh, um, collect the sample. And there are specialties that, as we mentioned, that the hearing and uh, vision and speech are very important for this population of patients. So these will be also conducted if the center is equipped to do so. Most of the center are able to do that, has, has the capacity to do that. So they will do that. And the last is the blood uh, sample collections for the biomedical research I mentioned earlier. So, um, so at this point, we uh, have collected 34 samples. We are going to analyze all the data. At the end, after enrollment, we did a quick look at the first 20 samples when we uh, reached that point. We noticed that about 75%, th three quarter of the individuals have the repeat size less than four. That's the smaller, at the smaller end. And uh, they, there's a rough correlation between age onset and the size of repeat. And we also noticed about half, thir one third of patients have hearing um, problems, loss, and uh, one fifth with vision problems and half of them with the speech uh, impairment. So um, I last, um, so last I'd like to um, thank the funding support. Um, this uh, study would not be possible without the um, support from the FSH Society, which uh, uh, sent out the first RFA for, uh, in, so to study infantile FSHD. And uh, we responded to the RFA. And then uh, it's also supported by Muscular Dystrophy Canada and FSHD Global Research Foundation. And at the end, I'd like to thank all the participants um, to, the, to the research um, study. Uh, without them, it is not possible for us to understand this disease more. Thank you.